Welcome to the third of three narrated PowerPoint videos for Laboratory 1 for BBE 4023 Process Control and Instrumentation. From the previous videos you know that the topic of Laboratory 1 is specification sheets. With these three videos you will have the background information to begin the laboratory activity you will complete in Laboratory 1 during your normal scheduled lab period. The first video introduced you to spec sheets and their use in the instrumentation world. The second video introduced you to the PDAC 55 unit. This video, the third video, describes how you can estimate measurement uncertainties using spec sheet information. You will also learn how drift can add to instrumentation system uncertainty. There is a lab handout that accompanies this presentation, the PDAC 55 user manual and spec sheets for magnahelic differential pressure gauges and pH electrodes will be on the Moodle website and available for use during the lab. These materials will be in Section 1 of the course Moodle website under Laboratory 1 Materials and Activities. You may want to pause the video and open up the PDAC 55 user manual to Section 2 since I will be referring to it later. In future material we will talk about precision and accuracy. While I will make a point about the difference in the two, their use is not consistent in instrumentation literature. Another term that you'll learn about in this class is measurement uncertainty. It is another way to describe the expected variation in or precision of a measurement. Measurement uncertainties are presented as plus minus some numeric value. This video describes how to convert accuracy and drift information in spec sheets into measurement uncertainties. So if you had a temperature measurement system that had an uncertainty of a plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius and the reading you obtained was 14.7 degrees Celsius, the correct way to write it is to write 14.7 degrees Celsius plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. This communicates to the reader that your measurement system could not distinguish temperatures from 14.5 to 14.9 degrees Celsius. Please find page 2-9 of the PDAC 55 user manual. Find the section labeled Voltage Specifications. The first line is labeled Accuracy. The information here indicates the uncertainty of the PDAC 55 output for a given analog voltage input. The information is in a form of an equation because the uncertainty depends on the voltage reading and the voltage range setting of the PDAC 55. Be sure to remember that you can select the input voltage range for each analog input channel so it makes sense to have an equation with voltage range as a variable. For example, let's assume that we have channel 5 on the PDAC 55 program to read a single-ended voltage input that can range from minus 5 to plus 5 volts. What would be the largest uncertainty of the reading due to the PDAC 55 unit? The worst case for the reading contribution to the uncertainty will be at either extreme, minus 5 or plus 5 volts. We will use plus 5 volt reading, the maximum allowed, so reading will be plus 5 volts. The range is 10 volts because we can go from minus 5 to plus 5 volts. The equation constants are given as percent values, so you need to move the decimal to the left two places when multiplying times either the reading or the range. Substituting in the values and going through the calculations produces an accuracy uncertainty of 0 0.0007 volts or 0 0.7 millivolts. So if the input voltage is 5 volts, the true reading would be 5 volts plus or minus 0 0.7 millivolts. This is a very small uncertainty. It is unlikely that it would be important in practice. The uncertainties associated with other devices will probably be more important. The point of this example is to show you how to do the calculations using spec sheet information. Temperature drift describes how the PDAC 55 output varies or drifts as the temperature that the PDAC 55 experiences changes. I want you to know how to do the calculations in case you have an application where the PDAC 55 or some other equipment is going to experience a large temperature change. The fourth line in the voltage specification section on page 2-9 tells us that the temperature coefficient is 5 parts per million plus 1 microvolt per degree Celsius. Where does parts per million come into play here? Well, the 5 parts per million can be written as 5 volts divided by 1 million volts. 
we need to know the plus minus voltage range of the input. Let's assume that we are using a PDEC 55 range of plus minus 20 volts for a differential input. It is important to remember that when using a plus minus range that the range span is the difference. In this case it would be 40 volts and let's assume that the equipment is going to experience a 10 degrees Celsius temperature change. We can calculate the expected temperature drift by multiplying the voltage range, 40 volts in this example, times the 5 parts per million or 5 divided by 1 million and adding the 1 microvolt and multiplying the product by the temperature change, 10 degrees Celsius in this example. The result is 2010 microvolts which is the same as 2.01 millivolts. So at full scale, the temperature drift would be expected to produce an uncertainty of plus or minus 2 millivolts. These last two slides illustrate how some of the specification sheet information is used to estimate the precision of the readings you will get from a sensor or instrumentation system. It can give you a way to compare the capabilities of different equipment, makes and models from different suppliers. The numbers we obtained in the examples are quite small and in many cases could be neglected, but you don't know that until you do the calculations. For the Laboratory 1 assignment, you'll be asked to answer 30 questions based on the information in these three Lab 1 videos and the information on the Moodle site about the PDEC 55, pressure gauges, and pH probes. You'll also be asked to calculate uncertainties given accuracy information and drift information. You will answer the questions during your assigned lab period. Answers are due by the end of your assigned lab period. This is the end of the third video for Laboratory 1. You're encouraged to write down any questions you might have so that you can ask them during lab.